For today's watch review, we're taking a look at the Heimdaller Sharky Frogman. So let's get right into it. For price, we're looking at $175 out the door so that includes shipping and taxes and everything and as a quick disclaimer the nato strap does not come with the watch instead you get this leather band i replaced it because i was not really happy with the quality of it but we can discuss that later i went ahead and removed the strap so we can go ahead and do a quick 360 just so we can see how light falls on it on all angles but there is the crown well really this is more like a crown guard the case back with the Sharky logo and here's the other side and you can see that this does have the helium release valve and there you go now going over the dimensions starting off with the diameter from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock including the crown we have 48.1 millimeters and then for case thickness we are looking at 13.1 millimeters and then a lug to lug of 48.2 millimeters and then a band width of 20 millimeters. For weight, including the original leather strap, we are looking at 96 grams or just under three and a half ounces. Here is how it sits on my seven and a half inch wrist. For its size, I think the dimensions are perfectly reasonable. However, I am not a big fan of this crown guard, but we'll talk about that later. Now going over functions and features, starting from the outside and working our way in. At the very top, we notice that there is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. It lines up just fine, at least to my eyes, but you will notice that there is a little bit of play. But at this price range, I don't think it's anything out of the ordinary. Right here on the right hand side, you will notice that there is a crown guard. It is a screw down crown guard and the actual crown is also a screw down crown. So you've got two layers of screw down protection, which can always be a good thing. And right here for the crystal, we've got a sapphire crystal. Underneath that, we've got applied loom on all of the indices. And underneath all of that, we've got an automatic Miyota movement. This one in particular is the 8215 automatic movement. It is not hacking, unfortunately, but that's not really a big deal to me. And I also pointed out that there is the helium relief valve right here. And all of this comes with 300 meters of water resistance. Let's go ahead and knock out that loom shot. I know that's probably one of the most important things to people, including myself. This one comes with the Swiss SLC1 Super Luminous Paint, and there's no surprise that it's fantastic. Heimdaller has always been, in my opinion, one of the best values for loom quality in the market. And really, I feel like they set the standard for how a watch's loom should be considering the price point. Now going over that bezel again, by the letter of the law, it functions as it should. It does everything that it needs to do. I will say that it is quite underwhelming. I don't really know how to explain it to you. Just know that as you are turning the bezel, it will feel hollow and empty. That's really the only way I can explain how it feels. Um, and those of you that have had very good quality bezels will know what I'm talking about. You can tell the difference between a solid uh, functioning bezel and then one like this where it almost just feels like this is just a hollow piece of metal and like you can hear the clicks echoing on the inside. Here's another look at that crown or at the crown guard actually. It is signed and I think it looks cool. It gives it some character. I always appreciate a signed crown or crown guard. Um, like I said before, it is a screw down crown. Now before I remove this crown guard, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. The crown guard is held to the case via this pin right here. But if you can see, mine is missing. And I don't know how it popped out, 
but it is missing. Uh, it was there when I got the watch at first, but through some very light use, it has fallen out. So, when I remove the crown guard, the entire assembly falls out. Is that a big deal? Nah, I don't know. We can talk about that later, but I'm just letting you know that it is not attached to the case anymore. And here is the crown itself. And let's go ahead and unscrew that. At least the threading on both the crown guard and the crown is fantastic. It's very easy to use. Uh, once it's fully unscrewed, then you can wind the watch, hand wind the watch, and pull it out two positions. And as you can see, the second hand is still ticking, so it is not hacking. Is that a big deal? Some people really prioritize a hacking movement. For me, I always adjust my time fast anyways, so I never set it to the right time. I set it like a couple minutes ahead of time, so that way it just gives me like a buffer, so I'm never late to anything. Um, but just letting you know, it's a non-hacking movement. And then of course the first click, just with any other watch, will adjust the date on that date window. Now looking at the leather strap, um, I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison between this one in person and then the picture online. Now to you, they might look the same, but for me personally, I felt like the online picture made it look a lot thicker, more robust, um, and just of a higher quality leather. In person, it's too soft for me. Like a watch called the Frogman, I would have expected, um, I don't know, just like a leather belt type material. Um, something that could withstand the environment of salt water or something like that. Um, and just like the bezel, the strap is very underwhelming to me. And another issue is the keeper is too big. So if you take off the watch and you're not actively using the keeper, it's just gonna fall off. Um, so 10 times out of 10, if you're not paying attention, this will fall off the strap. Now, other than that, other than the critical um, complaints that I have, I mean, it's a functioning strap. It's gonna work. Just for me personally, I don't like how it feels. It just feels kind of flimsy. Um, you do have this clasp right here, and it does have the Heimdall logo on it. So I do think that is quite nice. But those are my thoughts on the leather strap. Now going over the finishing. I feel like the finishing is good, but it seems like they started it and just didn't finish it. So you can see that we've got a brushed finish throughout the entire case. And it does look clean. It looks very good. I've got no complaints to that end. However, I will say that the edges particularly on the bottom and all around this crown guard is very sharp. They're almost like 90 degrees sharpened edges. Something that you would use to start a, uh, what's the thing? Uh, you know, like a fire starter, like a flint. Um, whereas in the case of another Heimdaller, the Heimdaller Monster, uh, this one, you know, it's very good polishing, finishing, but it also feels more refined. Like they took time to buff out the edges and it's just a very comfortable watch. Whereas this one, if your wrist is in a strange angle, if you're pressing something, you're definitely gonna feel those 90 degree edges against your skin. Uh, it's kind of a minor complaint, but just something that I feel like you should be aware of. At this point in the review, I'm kind of starting to feel like this might be my very first negative review because normally all my watch reviews are very positive. Um, but I will assure you there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, so a lot of my thoughts are a bit critical because there are two major components of the watch that uh, just leave me dissatisfied, um, namely the bezel and the crown. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you know that having a solid bezel and a solid crown is like the first impression that means the most to me. Uh, so, yep, the bezel is just hollow and underwhelming and unimpressive. And then the fact that the crown guard fell off almost immediately. You know, I think I've owned this watch for two weeks. Two weeks and I don't even do frogman stuff, right? I'm just a desk diver and you know, it couldn't handle that. Now the over, overall watch quality is great. Like I said before, by the letter of the law, this is a watch and it will tell time and it'll do so perfectly fine. You know, it's got a Miyota movement, which is great. Uh, but for the level of quality that Heimdaller normally has, this one is just not up to par. 
So do I recommend it? Well, yes and no. So it's no secret that this is a homage to the Hamilton Frogman, which, if we're looking at the price, is about five times more expensive than the Heimdaller. So for those of you who are on a budget, or you just don't want to fork over that amount of cash for a watch, then I think this is a great alternative. It looks exactly like the Hamilton, and like I said before, it tells the time it'll do exactly what you need it to do. But on the other hand, if you can afford $175 in one month, then it might just be better to wait four or five months and then get the original Hamilton. Now keep in mind, I am very biased towards Hamilton. They are quickly becoming my number one watch company because they have always never failed to impress and their watches are just phenomenal, at least in my opinion. Uh, but I also want to save you from getting a poor quality watch. And in this case, while I don't think that this is a terrible watch, I, I feel like your $175 can go a lot further somewhere else. And I think Heimdaller kind of knows that this is probably not one of their um, more impressive watches, which is why it's sort of hidden away in their website. All of their very good top-notch watches are you know, proudly advertised on their first pages, and this one you have to sort of dig to find it. And I guess I shouldn't have been surprised because there's really not a lot of coverage on this watch. I think I might be like the first review on YouTube. Maybe not, but if so, um, I hope the takeaway from this review is that, you know, if you get this watch, it'll work just fine. I'm not telling you not to get it, um, but there are just some things that you should be prepared for and that you should just manage your expectations when you do get this one. So that's all I got to say for now guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the review, I hope that it helps you with your next watch purchase, and if you've stayed here this long, just keep in mind, my Discord server is going on strong, I think we have a lot of good discussions, it's not just for watch related talk, it is for anything, there are some rules, but they're just there to make sure that we keep the peace, um, so if you're interested, come on and join, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, you're more than welcome to join the community and uh, I hope to see you there and catch my next review. Alright guys, see you later. Bye.